forwarder, a fast daily freight to the Pacific coast, is made up and waiting. At the district foreman's office, engine dispatcher Gene Zalfell rounds up the train's crew. First on his list is engineer Arthur Franks. Franks has served 33 years with the Union Pacific. Hello. All right, we'll call for a 115 manifest, the 9031. Okay, Cecil, I'll be there. Who's the fireman? John Drew, the fireman. Usually, Frank's run takes him away from home about two days. His wife, Agnes, has grown accustomed to these departures. At the Council Bluffs Roundhouse, Engine 9031, a veteran steam locomotive, is brought out for the day's run after a thorough check. Roundhouse hostler Lefty Miller services the big engine with water and coal. Only a few years ago, steam locomotives like this freight engine were the undisputed rulers of the rails. But today, the old iron horse is outnumbered by the diesel by more than two to one. Cold up, the locomotive is ready for its run. It is backed up and its tender hooked to the first car of the Northwest Forwarder. The train is now complete. Before getting into his cab, engineer Franks meets conductor Gabe Conant. In a solemn, unvarying ritual, they check their watches. Engineer Franks has made this run hundreds of times. But before each run, as fireman John Blue checks his firebox, he reviews the peculiar qualities and habits of the particular engine he's taking on the day's run. Each and every steam engine has its own personality. Some are energetic and lively. Others are just plain lazy. We will run steam engines for many years, must face reality. Every day, more and more diesels are replacing the old steam engine. The transition from steam to diesel affects me much as it did the old cavalryman when they took his horse away from him and put him on a jeep. I run diesels as well as steam. I have seen the diesels replace the steam engines. I have seen the gas turbine enter into the picture. And who can say that possibly I might someday see an atomic locomotive? The switch and control tower crew set the signals and switches that will send the Northwest forwarder out of the yards onto the main line. The train's progress is shown on the panel above the switch handle. It is also relayed to the tower by telephone. Summit, XP coming up track one. Let him come. XP up three. Switches and signals are set. And finally, Engineer Franks gets the highball. Highball, all
car in his caboose is responsible for the entire train and its freight. Conductor Conant settles down to checking the manifest, the paperwork that is such an important part of his job. Traveling westward out of Omaha, the northwest forwarder meets eastbound trains that will deliver their freight to Omaha's yard for sorting and forwarding. Of all the trains moving east to Omaha, the cattle trains from the West ranching country are the most important to this Nebraska community. Omaha is the world's largest cattle market. In cattle revenue, Omaha exceeds even the famous Chicago stockyard. Each day, dozens of livestock trains from all over the West bring their freight of cattle, hogs, and sheep to Omaha's Union stockyards. Here, they are herded into pens to await the arrival of buyers.